Hello everybody, this is Dr. Hart and um, it's a pleasure to welcome you to this little presentation on conducting an observational study. Um, because we're still experiencing some problems with our text, uh, I'm going to be using this presentation as a way of sort of summarizing what you would find in the text uh, uh, as well as uh, some information about how to conduct an observational study. We're going to be talking about two different kinds of observational studies today. One is called the uh, controlled study and the other is called a naturalistic study. I'm going to go on to the next slide here and you'll see a little bit more. One of the first things that we need to keep in mind about doing a study in human behavior is that the study should be rooted in the literature. Human behavior study is not evolution and not revolutionary it is evolutionary which means that we take things step by step and once we establish a scientific truth at one stage we use that as the jumping off point to moving on to the next stage so um, I'm going to be uh, to help us to focus and save a little bit of time in this activity because we're going to have to do quite a bit of activity in just two class sessions I'm going to, f and, and since our observation is going to be student activity on the campus here at USFQ, uh, while the students are uh, pretty much doing a lot of uh, leisure activities, we're going to make leisure activity the focus of our study. So, if human behavior studies start with the literature, what does the literature say about adolescence and leisure? Now, this is where I'm going to summarize what's in the text. Uh, and um, hopefully you get the text sometime soon. And so uh, when you do that, uh, we're, the literature that I, we're going to be focusing on is from pages 229 to 237. And that's a section in the, in the text called Adolescence and, and Leisure. Now, um, as I said, we're going to be two, doing two different kinds of observational studies. We're going to start with a naturalistic observation study. And the question that we're going to be dealing with is what behaviors do adolescents exhibit in structured and unstructured settings in a medium-sized private liberal arts university in Ecuador? That's the naturalistic observation. And it's going to, so it's going to be very wide open. We're going to resolve ourselves into some teams, we're going to go out, we're going to do this naturalistic observation, and we're simply going to be making notes about the things that we see. You're just going to take a sheet of paper, or maybe it's your, um, uh, your uh, iPad, or uh, your smartphone, or whatever it is, but we're going to be going out, and we're going to be doing these naturalistic observations. We're just going to be standing to the side, watching people, we'll divide ourselves up into to, uh, teams and go off into different parts of the campus. Okay, Then we're going to come back at the end of the uh, first session and we're going to talk a little bit about our results. We're going to talk about what we observed. And out of those, obser out of those conclusions from our observation, we're going to come up with a controlled observation. And in this controlled observation, we're going to be counting behaviors. In the naturalistic, we're simply writing down notes in words, okay? We would call this a qualitative observation. Uh, but with the controlled observation, we're going to be focusing on very specific behaviors, and we're going to be counting those behaviors. Now, um, what does the literature say about adolescence and leisure? Well, these are some topics that the textbook talks about. Uh, one of the first uh, topics that it talks about is affect with and without friends. And by affect, we mean what are our emotions, okay? And basically, they boil down to four basic emotions. Happy, sad, angry, and scared. Happy, sad, angry, and scared. So um, one of the questions in this uh, investigated and in research about adolescence and leisure is what kinds of affects do adolescents feel when they are with and without their friends okay and it could be a wide variety it could be they feel happy with their friends 
They feel sad without their friends. They feel angry with their friends. They feel scared. Um, and then also, if you look in the textbook, there's also the whole question of gender. And do girls uh, approach these situations with friends differently? Do they experience different affect than uh, what boys experience? Okay. Um, another act, another uh, question uh, that's uh, asked frequently in the literature about uh, adolescence and leisure is the question about the their uh, about adolescence activities in sports or in dance. Uh, and uh, a topic that's a real hot topic is the flow experience in sports and dance. And by the flow experience, we mean this, this experience that people have of simply flowing through their sports. So they, they really don't think it through. Um, it, it's a very uh, naturalistic kind of uh, phenomenon uh, that you feel a very strong sense of elation. You feel like you're above the game, like you're observing yourself, uh, and um, so you're slightly outside of yourself. Um, and uh, flow experience is a very highly prized thing in physical activities like sports and dance because um, the athlete or the dancer or the other person, maybe it's in yoga or in some other physical activity, when they're feeling the flow experience, they're performing at their absolute top best. Um, another question is how do um, adolescents act uh, in controlled extracurricular participation? Uh, we've got a few extracurricular activities around the campus here. Uh, frequently we'll see students down playing uh, football in the soccer pitch, um, but uh, there may be some other extracurricular participation activities. That'll be one thing that we'll talk about in class is if you have some ideas about where we might find some people to do that. And then finally, there's the whole issue of unstructured leisure time. Uh, there's a theory uh, mentioned in the textbook. It's called the routine activity theory, which uh, basically says that the less structure in the activities for the adolescent, the more uh, chance there is for problem behavior. Uh, so that's a theory, and you know that's something that maybe we could look at uh, in our observations. Another uh, issue uh, for adolescents and leisure is time after school, and the textbook uh, talks quite a bit about uh, the opportunities, unfortunately, for problems to happen. Remember, uh, the number one uh, reason for death in young adolescents in the United States is injury. Uh, the number one cause of death in Ecuador among adolescents is automobile accidents. And so those are just examples of time after school activities that can really be a problem. Uh, but there can be other time after school activities as well. And uh, so we'll, we'll look at that, or we could look at that as part of our observational study. And then finally, there's the topic of promoting positive youth development. Uh, and there may be some activities that are going on at USFQ um, that are specifically focused on developing uh, positive youth. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what's happening there, um, if the university is engaged in that sort of activity, uh, and you know what that activity looks like. So, um, as I said, the routine, uh, the, the sequence here is going to be that we're going to meet on Tuesday at a regular time. After I review this presentation, then we're going to have you go into your naturalistic data collection by going out onto the campus. I'm going to ask you to divide up into teams and decide in your team where you're going to do your observations. And your observations are going to be naturalistic, okay? Then, um, after doing your observations briefly, you're going to come back and we're going to talk uh, briefly about those observations. We're going to try to identify some elements that we can observe in the controlled observation phase of the study, which will then take place on Thursday. We'll do the controlled observation uh, phase of the study um, during the Thursday class session. We'll have you come back and then we'll have you do a, a brief discussion 
and reach some conclusions about your study. Okay? So I um, hope that helps, and I'm looking forward to working with you next week on this activity.